Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am here with the CEO and founder of After Hour, Kevin Zhu. And this is going to be an exclusive podcast that is launched on the day of an announcement that Kevin has made. Kevin, why don't we just get started? What announcement did you make today? Thank you so much, Amit, for having me. Today is a really exciting day. If we timed this perfectly, uh, we had just announced our four and a half million dollar seed fundraise from some great investors like Founders Fund and General Catalyst and Pair VC. And I believe it should be published in Fortune. So thank you, Ali, at Fortune for uh, covering the piece. So four and a half million dollars, uh, that's not easy to do, not easy to raise venture capital, and not easy to convince some very important people in the world that you have a potential billion dollar vision. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about what is that vision, why it's so important. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast is because after hour, for those that don't know, is all about the stock market. So I guess we'll start, we'll get started with this first question. What is after hour and why are you in particular someone who started it? What history do you have with the stock market that got you to build this product? Sure, sure. I could talk about hours about this. Um, the short version is uh, after hour is like Robin Hood and Discord had a baby uh, with <laughs> the Wall Street best kid as their like fun uncle. And, you know, on the surface, it looks like a, you know, a, a stock based social network, right? Like a social investing platform, et cetera. And really, our mission is to help people make better financial decisions together, right? Like more and more, we have as a, as a, as a, as a generation become more open to sharing our finances. There's just so much knowledge trapped inside uh, of everyone, right? I think personal finance has just been solitude for too long. And what uh, we've seen with movements like Wall Street Bets is that uh, there's real alpha in learning from each other. And that's really what inspired me to create it. So you mentioned uh, why am I the right person to start this and, and what, I, what, what I was doing beforehand. So uh, the short version is that professionally, I look like your typical techie. I was a PM at Google and YouTube. I was an engineer at Stripe. Uh, I studied computer science at Stanford. Um, but on the internet, I'm better known online as Sir Jack, uh, mm. or Sir Jack a lot on Wall Street Bets. And I felt like I was reborn, you know, uh, under this pseudonym. I, I basically, I traded my way from 35,000 to $8 billion. Uh, and I shared every single position I made along the way. And I grew a following. Um, I, you know, I became, I guess like a mini celebrity on Wall Street Bets. And I saw real, um, I, I saw this, 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 this real power in pseudonymous, but verified the, when you're under a username, you're just a lot more open about financial topics. And, you know, we see that on discord, we see that on Twitter. Um, but at the same time, you don't really know who to trust, right? right. Like people are sharing screenshots. Um, there's, there's all these furus like sharing their, their gains and even just taking screenshots of their calculators. <laughs> uh, and, and yet, uh, when I was, uh, when, when we could talk about the GameStop play later, uh, but when I was uh, $1.5 million in the GameStop play, I formed uh, a small chat room with about 13 other verified whales, mini whales, other kind of just like just like folks that are really into the play. And I had to use like my own spidey senses to tell like, are these people legit or not? Right. Right. And it was really just, just powerful to be able to talk to other folks that you know for sure are actually in GameStop compared to watching CNBC or reading a Seeking Alpha article. That's like, what does this guy know? Do they actually have money in the play, right? right. Putting your money where your mouth is. And so really, uh, after I was, was really birthed from this concept of like, hey, uh, we, uh, you, know, you could actually attach your brokerage, verify your positions, and share it with a group of people. And I think that just kind of overall makes you a better investor. So this was, uh, you started After Hour in 2021, is that correct? I started After Hour, I think in uh, 2022, and we launched our first version in 2023, yeah. Okay, so in 2021, uh, in 2020, around the pandemic, that's when you started getting a lot more serious about the markets. Uh, you had a nice tech job. Uh, the the rumor is on the street, you took 35,000 and you turned it into 8 million. Is that correct? That is correct. And all the receipts are out there. <laughs> if you visit okay. my Reddit profile, all the receipts. I, I was so transparent uh, sharing screenshots and also like the the, the, like the end of year summaries mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So how did that happen? How did you do that? Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I think the most people will call me a swing trader or a momentum trader. I had a crazy style. I would basically go all in on one stock at a time. That's crazy, but it is effective, right? Because if you get one right, you double, triple the position, and then you get the next one right, and that one's that's basically what it's, happened. 
It compounds. That's basically what happened. Um, no margin, uh, no options. Actually, this was all happening in my 401k and they didn't even allow those things. And so it was mm. just pure common, common stock. And uh, I'm like, I'm a simple person, you know, I can only really keep track of a few stocks uh, at a time. And that's why I love, you know, I love the content that you make because you're like all in on Robin Hood and Palantir. Because I think uh, when you have high conviction in a, in a, in a, in a company, in a, in a trade, and you have money in that trade, you really just go all in on your research. You're watching the stock charts today. You're, you're, you're watching, you know, the the, the, the tweets that uh, the, the, the CEOs make, et cetera. And you just learn everything you can about that topic. And, you know, I think you know more about it than most analysts <laughs> that work at hedge funds. And right. so, um, yeah, so I started with $35,000 in February of 2020. And if you recall, that was like right when COVID-19 was picking up, right? Uh, yep. And so... I had stumbled upon this company called APT, which was a face mask company based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. And I thought this was an interesting company because it's, you know, American made, right? And and it, everyone was starting to talk about N95 masks and that's like all they made. And I'm like, oh, you know, I got $35,000 sitting around in my 401k. I can't touch this anyways <laughs> for the next 30 years. Why not just go all in on this one stock and see what happens? Yep. Uh, and and that tripled like literally in a month. So now it was like 35,000. Now it's like 90,000. And then I learned about this company called Codex, C-O-D-X, uh, who was a PCR testing company based out of Salt Lake City, Utah as well. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, testing's you know a big thing now. So I put the 90K in there. I turned it to 200K. Uh, and then I just kept doing that. You know, I think I rode uh, Chewy because I got a dog and I'm like, hey, millions of Americans just got dogs. Yeah, Chewy's going to do well. It's e-commerce as well, right? And uh, there's kind of gut intuition and saw where the wind took you. Exactly, exactly. Um, and and then the GameStop was a, 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 actually a pretty small part of that. Uh, it helped me get from like 1.3 to 1.5. Um, I think, yeah, Palantir, Corsair, Rocket Mortgages. Uh, it just goes, the list goes on and on. But uh, I just kept doing that for about two years until I hit my 8 million mark. Okay, so obviously, uh, you know about the stock market, you've been in the stock market, you understand the tech side of building products, and then you actually got to experience the uh, degenerate side of, of gambling in the markets and, and, and getting right uh, to the tune of 35,000 to 8 million. So let's talk about the product itself. Who is the ideal user for this product? Uh, and who do you want to sign up and ultimately use the product at the end of the day? That's a great question. That's a great question. I call it the first uh degen native <laughs> social network okay <laughs> because you know i i love the term degenerates it's it's it's, it's actually i think uh a, a, a self-awareness right that like you know we are taking risky moves but we're doing it you know with as uh for good reason uh and with as much uh insight as possible and so we're really going after the you know the always online uh investor who is basically hopping around you know, Twitter and, and Reddit, this are looking for alpha, right? Or they're, they're constantly online on their lunch breaks, uh, on their morning commutes, just trying to get got to get an edge on the markets. And they probably find themselves um, behind or like, there's a lot of noise here or like, can I really trust this guy? Or like, I got scammed by this, this random guru. And so uh, they need to come to After Hour because we're the only platform that can really capture the velocity of the markets combined with the credibility of knowing what people are actually in. And I think that just adds to the, to the alpha so much. And we're building a lot of you know features coming up uh, to help you find the gurus that kind of match your style, to jump into chat rooms with these gurus so you can kind of um, learn from them as the, the market goes on uh, and ultimately be able to you know copy their portfolios. So let's get into that part of the conversation. It, it, you say it's the first kind of degen native uh, social network and application for people that want to take these risks and then communicate with people in a crowdsourced way uh, from a from a startup perspective, right? So you raise 4.5 million uh, venture capitalists don't invest in startups unless they think there's a billion dollar opportunity. What is the TAM to you of this opportunity? Do you think there's enough degens out there? Do you think degeneracy mm. Is uh, and we'll talk about the recent meme stock rally, but is that kind of just a moment in time and then it fades out? How do you think the market is expanding and building to fuel? Yeah, 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 for the yeah. I mean, to put it simply, the TAM for this is huge. There's a hundred million retail investors out there, they're becoming more and more uh, active in DIY. There's tons of trends showing that there's a higher percentage of Americans owning individual stocks than ever before. 
uh, as we saw with the recent <laughs> um, uh, meme stock 2.0, they never left, right? They've been they, they they're still active. Everybody has a brokerage app on their on their phone now, right? Everyone has a brokerage app downloaded. Now I think it's about that education piece. It's about that attention piece. Uh, where are people learning about the markets? And we're really just starting with the DGen crowd. And I think that's um, actually going to be really powerful for us because they're the most, they're the content creators, right? They're the ones actually creating content every day. Like investments and finance in general, it spans the gamut in terms of time. You know, um, most investments are on the order of months to years. You know, long-term investing is still the right play to make. <laughs> index funds, uh, the majority of Americans are in index funds. And, um, um, uh, but, but we're starting to see a lot of people also be interested in selling options, yeah. um, and, 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 you know, options trading has, has exploded in the, in the last few years. Right. And so those daily discussions, they're currently happening on after hour. And so you're able to open after hour and just get a lot of content, especially for us in terms of just like, you know, growing from zero to one, we really want to target the most active and online, uh, population first. What is the uh, the business model? How do you guys plan on monetizing the growth? Uh, that mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. We have a couple of um, low hanging fruit regarding the creator economy. You know, you've probably seen people shilling their Patreons and their WAPs and all these uh, these 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 paid things, and uh, we think we could do it so much better, right? Like these are third party platforms disconnected from the Discord and Telegrams that they're on, so it makes mm. a kind of funky kind of experience. Um, you don't really know where you're kind of getting yourself into. And it also lacks the discoverability piece, right? Right now, um, uh, you know, creators or gurus, they have to set up a WAP and they have to also kind of market themselves on TikTok or Twitter. What we've, what the, the most fascinating thing that's happened in the last few months is that After Hour feels like YouTube in 2008. Mm. <laughs> so, so follow me here. In, in 2008, um, you basically just had these these kids you know filming themselves in their in their bar, in their bedrooms right and right hollywood looked down on them and uh i mean like who, who's look who's laughing now right like it, it, the internet has just, had, it just made it so much easier to create content uh it democratized you know video editing and and and, and production and writing and all that kind of stuff so uh, everyone had the ability to upload a video now find an audience and it looks like that market is much bigger than than hollywood yeah. and on, on After Hour, we have these folks who are sharing great plays, great ideas, great games. Um, and honestly, they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with hedge funds, right? Like to this day, hedge funds still look down on, on retail. And that pisses me off a lot, right? Because mm. like, I think the whole point of investing is that if you, uh, if you uh, do a little bit of research, right, um, uh, have a little bit of luck, that you could actually uh, put yourself in a much better financial decision, a much better financial situation. And why should that, why is that looked down upon, right? Why, why can't retail um, play the same game as, as hedge funds? And hedge funds play a much nastier game. You know, if you watch uh, that show Billions, uh, you'll see some of, the, some of the games they play. And so, uh, right, so back to my analogy, U2008, uh, what made YouTube really powerful was they started paying their creators, right? right. There was a certain class of people who just cared more about being a YouTuber, right? And even though everyone can upload videos, right? YouTube was is just it's, it's, it's pretty. Um, um, it's, yeah, everyone everyone technically is a YouTuber. Everyone can upload videos, but just there's a certain class of people that care more, and they provided the frameworks and and incentives to kind of grow their careers. We're going to do the same thing for After Hour, right? There's a certain right. class of gurus in After Hour that just care more about sharing updates every day, about answering people's questions, and eventually we want to figure out what are the subscription tiers, what are the features that we want to help. So that these people but let me let me ask on that out. is is advertising something that you're not interested in as a business model? Um, advertising, um, not in the short run. You know, we're definitely not interested in selling any of our data. Mm -hmm. Like, I do think, uh, uh, you know, we want to share the data to everyone, right? There is a lot of interesting trends that we're seeing that we'd love to kind of publicize it just in the app or on a website, just so anyone can kind of see it. But no, I don't. I'm not interested in any kind of uh, um, you know backdoor deals in terms of our data. Um, so the, the, the reason I asked that question is because if advertising isn't the, the kind of core business model and it's more subscription oriented and you guys take a cut of it, basically like Patreon, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that means the relationship between the end user and the creator on after hour, uh, would have to be really special, right? Because it takes a lot yeah. for someone to put their credit card and actually pay five, six bucks a month. 
Um, and then for that creator to want to share the, the revenue that they're bringing to the platform with the platform itself. So how do you think that relationship, this sort of symbiosis between the creator and the consumer will develop enough for a subscription tier to really form on the, on the product? And um, I would add the average um, ARPU, the average revenue that I've seen uh, for these financial clubs is a lot bigger than five or six dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I think hundreds of dollars were like two hundred yeah. to five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so I think you know when you're 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 subscribed to something and you're able to kind of you know make money off of that, uh, that's why people are able to charge a little bit higher. Uh, I think it's really about providing um, uh, that one-to-one -one relationship at scale, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, you could, uh, you know. Uh, the, 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 there's millions of insights out there. We're still humans and social creatures at the end of the day. And, you know, I get pitched another AI bot idea to kind of automate financial decisions and investing. I think that does appeal to a certain crowd. But what I've seen is that the, the, the majority of humans still trust other humans. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so we've learned, you know, uh, a lot of life through, um, uh, you know, non social media these days, right? We learn about, uh, cooking and and parenting and, and going to the gym like these are things that we don't learn from traditional education we learn it from social media and others that look like you or talk like you uh and i think we're starting to see the same thing with finance right we're not you know i never picked up a a financial textbook i never uh took a class i learned everything from youtube and reddit comments uh and now from after hour how do you plan to grow the product? So startups kind of the, the core thing they're judged on is growth. And this mm -hmm. gets into the sort of next caveat here. We've seen in the past two months, a uh, or the past really two to three weeks, a, a pretty remarkable return of Roaring Kitty. GameStop went up, uh, GameStop, I think it got to $80. Now it's at $20. At one point, it was $7. AMC went to 11 bucks at one point. Faraday Future, all these random little coins, not even coins, stocks, yeah. started acting like meme coins and they 10, 20 x um, and then Roy and Kitty stopped tweeting uh, over the past two weeks. And now momentum kind of dying out a little bit. Have you seen growth on the platform? And do you think more moments like that can capitalize the overall trajectory of growth? Oh, yeah, that was a fun week for, for after hour users. <laughs> um, any, I mean, I think it just goes to show that the market's never been, never been, you know, less exciting, right? It's, 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 it's always, um, uh, volatility is, is uh, I think, only going to increase as more and more participants enter the markets. I think uh, I was talking to somebody about what did the stock market look like, you know, 10, 20 years ago, right? Uh, were earnings as big events as they are now, right? It feels like um, these these are like our, our like um, our Super, Super Bowls, Bowls right? Bowls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when the video has earnings, like everyone's tuning into like what Jensen Wang is going to say. Um, and what Jay Powell is speaking, like these are our kind of, you know, uh, water cooler topics. So um, meme stocks are, it's, it's, it's a percentage of that, right? It's easy to create content around that, especially on general purpose social media where uh, the algorithms really uh, prioritize engagement. And that's why you get a lot of memes and stuff like that. Right. And on After Hour, we saw more users tune in because people were sharing their positions. People were right. sharing their GameStop plays, like how are they going to play it? Uh, when are you going to sell, et cetera? Like these more helpful topics, right, were happening on After Hour. I think people found a lot, a lot of value from that. And most importantly, they're they're staying, right? Like um, we don't have any gimmicky growth hacks. We don't spam users at all. Uh, and people just come back every market day. And I think that's the most remarkable part of what we've built so far. How important to you is product? I know I know you talked about Discord and Robinhood. Is product the core focus when you think of building? Mm hmm Yep. Yep. Um, I, I know I, there's different uh, schools of thought regarding uh, growth and stuff like that. I subscribe to, you know, uh, build I, it's, it's a little bit traditional, but you know, building a good product and 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 um, uh, users will at least, you know, will stay. I think product led growth is kind of the industry buzzword. Um, the 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 main thing is as a social product, we have to grow through um, some uh, a, re a repeatable process, right? You know, like going viral on TikTok uh, will get you a nice spike of downloads, but it's not repeatable, right? And so we're heavily investing in a invite system and a referral system, especially combined with some of the guru club ideas that I mentioned. You can kind of think of like a like a like Twitch Prime or like a you know, the Amazon Prime Twitch membership, right? So if you invite people, you'll get uh, access to like a free membership that that we comp for you, so you can subscribe to your favorite guru. 
Have you guys thought of, uh, I'm, ju I'm just curious, have you thought of content-led growth as in um, not just like TikToks and things of that nature, but we see yeah. Yahoo Finance, CNBC, uh, big media companies that have essentially created monopolies around the stock market and they have the talking heads, the Dan Ives, the all these people of the world, they go on their networks and they bring distribution and those companies monetize via traditional cable advertising. Have you ever thought of building out like a media network for after hours and then that media network being something you, don't, you guys don't care about monetizing because you're not a media right, business, but right. using that as top of the funnel distribution to get users. No, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, we have been talking to more and more creators about kind of being, you know, ambassadors and 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 creating their own content, but also kind of pitching after hour um, uh, towards the end of it. I think it's just about figuring out, you know, uh, balancing cost and and time and effort with that. Right. Um, a lot of my <laughs> adventures into kind of making TikTok is, is and kind of generally the kind of the, the social media landscape, right? Is really trending towards like hits, right? Yeah. And it, it's, it's 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 a crazy. Uh, it's really hard to um, invest in because you spend you know a couple hours making a couple videos and they all get stuck at like two thousand views and you're like, oh, those hours could have been better spent making something that's a little bit more repeatable or uh, gets you a higher degree of a, a higher certainty to get users, but. A media brand is, yes, that's something I've always thought about. That's something I always thought about. Like the way we've branded our website and our logo and it's called After Hour. And the why is it, yeah, why is it called After Hour? Why is it called After Hour? I wanted something a little edgy. You okay. Know, a, a Sounds like a tequila like, drink at a bar or something. Like, let me get an After Hour, you know? Like something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what's going on in there? You know, it's like the little, it's like the, uh, the After Hour Club. Uh, ah. and yeah, it's related to the markets, right? After Hours Trading. Uh, and I think uh, our vision is actually, you know, even bigger than the markets. Uh, it's the stock market, right? We would love to also uh, expand it to cryptocurrencies. Uh, sports well, let's betting. get into that. Your vision is bigger than the market. What do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. It all, you know, it, it, it ties back to um, the, the, the mission statement I shared earlier. Our goal, our mission is to help people make better financial decisions together. And in my, you know, my whole life, um, there wasn't that many people I could talk to about finance. Right. right, like maybe your parents and maybe that one friend that kind of you know knew a lot. And uh, on my Reddit, I'm subscribed to like all the finance uh, subreddits. Right, you got personal finance, you got stocks and options, you got Fat Fire uh, and Fire, uh, real estate. And I learned through so much. And I think finance has just become more and more important uh, in society. Um, and like my, I, I believe we should be talking about finance even more. Like probably, you know, <laughs> in your world and, and in this audience, they're like, oh, we already talk about finance a lot. But if you look at the kind of average American, I don't think they talk about or think about finances that much. Um, mm. I think, you know, it's just become more important, especially in modern society. And we're talking about the st stock market right now and what you can invest in. But I, I see this far future, similar to how, you know, after 10 years, Robin could launch a credit card. Uh, we branch out into savings and and spending. Like that's also part of the financial conversation, right? Like, what are you right. buying? Like, right. I would love to know amongst my peers how much they're spending on DoorDash. <laughs> like, am I an outlier, uh, or, or what's what's kind of the average there? Uh, maybe even uh, getting into the specifics of like uh, what restaurants they they spent their money at recently. Like, Venmo has is, is the only I think app that shares publicly what people you know transact. Albeit it's like a field, and you can just type whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just it's just so insightful to be able to actually see what people are spending their money on whether it's an investment or, um, you know, a pair of shoes. Right. Um, what is the AI angle towards after hours? Because you have to have one. There's no way you don't have one. So what is it? We have a couple of ideas that we're brewing in what I call like the 20% lab. Um, I'll share the first one that uh, should be rolling out soon. Uh, it's called Stock Plays. And it's pretty simple. It's basically a summary of a user's um, position or a user's thoughts on a stock position, right? Because let's say uh, Robinhood, for example, um, I'm in Robinhood. I've been posting about it. I'm, I have uh, been commenting about it. I've been chatting about it in the Robinhood chat room. So I have all this content on After Hour about Robinhood, right? And yet if you, and, and, and you know, it's just a lot to dig through and people just end up asking me like, hey, Sir Jack, why did you buy Robinhood? Right. <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh, just go read it. But like, no, 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 people are too lazy. And so uh, stock plays is basically a way to summarize all that content and eventually let other people kind of ask, hey, why did he buy it? When did he originally buy it? Right. How much does he own right now? I think that's just a much more 
uh, optimized way to understand someone's DD essentially. Right. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of maneuvers with AI in terms of the way people trade and how algorithms can sort of recognize what are the trends in how people are trading or the trends of conversations on the mm -hmm, product itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that just creates more user engagement at the end of the day. 100%. I mean, like today, uh, some of the questions I saw in After Hour were like, why is Square dropping? And I'm like, I would love for an AI to answer that. <laughs> right. There is there is an uh, extension to this idea I call uh, Stock Insights um, or AI Insights because um, I'm not sure how many people remember this. On the TD Ameritrade app, right, um, which is uh, unfortunately defunct now because they got everyone got migrated to Charles Schwab, but on the TD Ameritrade mobile app, they had this section called, um, I forgot what's called. It was like, why is this happening, right? And it was an editor's note. I think someone manually added this like little widget under a stock chart that tried to explain in like a sentence or two, like why is this happening? Mm. And I thought that was always so powerful. Um, it was very rare because like I think someone manually had to do it. Now imagine you open a stock chart, or you know you open After Hour, you go to Robinhood, and you could just ask an AI like, what's going on? <laughs> And it just pulls everything from the internet and it just tells you in a sentence or two what's going on. Pretty powerful move. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty and, powerful and also move. Sharing that, right? Like I think again, every idea that we build for after we want it to be social at its core. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tools being made that are again very just like solo. And I, I think the the fun part is being able to kind of share everything. Right. Um, can you speak to the philosophy around? degenerate gambling and, and sort of the argument I have around here is that the stock market is seen as a way to get to financial freedom. There's real estate, you know, starting a company, ultimately having equity in something. Um, and, and then there's just like, you know, taking certain amounts of your capital and allocating it to different plays that are uh, by nature degenerate. Do you think that all young people should invest in just an index? Because if they do, your product doesn't really have that much of a market because people aren't really doing fun stuff. Or do you think there are certain uh, amounts of people's net worth that should be allocated to this? Or that more in a more deeper question, people feel they have no other choice but to allocate to GameStop because the traditional financial system has right, has right, right. That's a very complicated question. Um, a lot of it does um, come down to where you are in your life, right? Like, you know, do you have a job? Is it stable and high earning where you can risk, you know, a couple thousand dollars on a degenerate play? What's your what's your motivation for doing that? Are you just trying to get rich quick? Right? Or uh, are you okay with, with, with a loss like that? Uh, because a lot of the real degenerate stuff uh, can go to zero really fast. Yeah. Right? Like I'm yeah. like shocked yeah. by like how, how many people play like spy zero DTE like every day. Yeah. Uh, and the data backs it up. I think, you know, zero DTE, one DTE options. I mean, the SEC approved them. <laughs> so, 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 so they are, you know, they, they deem it like good enough for, for the world. Um, but they're incredibly risky because they could go to zero really, really fast, right? Right, right. Um, from uh, from the data, what I've seen is that a lot of our users they have like ninety percent in index funds. You mm -hmm. know, they are a little bit traditional in that sense, where like they understand that um, uh, most of the money should be tied up in index funds, but they have a ten percent, you know, play account or or gambling account they they self proclaim, uh, and it's just a way to kind of you know get a little bit of edge uh, on the kind of day to day, especially if you have some particular insight, right? I think. Uh, especially, you know, my peer circle and 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 friends, uh, a lot of them work in the tech industry. And uh, if you're on tech Twitter, uh, you kind of you know understand what's going on in the tech world. Right. And so, Nvidia would have been a pretty obvious play, you know, <laughs> uh, two years ago. I'm not sure right now if it's uh, a little too hot, but why not put a little bit more money in there, right? So I I, th I think there's a stigma against uh, buying individual stocks amongst a certain crowd, and I think that's you know. Totally nonsense. Uh, I think uh, buying individual stocks, especially when you're young, especially when you have a job and you can kind of tank that loss if it happens. Um, generally, you also just learn more about the world that way. Tell me the raise and how you guys raise money. How are you able to convince some of the smartest investors in the world for 4.5 million? Yeah, yeah. Um, so much credit to Nico Bonazzos uh, at General Catalyst. Uh, he was the first check in After Hour. And uh, I love him. Uh, he has an eye for uh, consumer stuff, uh, especially uh, I think how he calls it like subcultures and uh, controversial things. He was an early investor in Snapchat yep. uh, and, uh, and 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 Discord as well. And so um, uh, much credit to him. And what you know at this stage is really about that founder market fit, 
right? Like right. there have been other attempts at social investing products. And you look at the founders, uh, they tend to come from a more traditional background. And like earlier said, uh, that Venn diagram of degenerate <laughs> and knows how to build product comes from the tech industry. That, that who, the, the people in that Venn diagram are very, very small. And so uh, he took a big uh, bet in myself. And our seed round was led by uh, Kiefer, Kiefer Bois uh, uh, when well, he was at Founders Fund. Right. And also much credit to him. I think he saw my product creativity uh, and ingenuity and just generally my passion for the space. And I think that uh, combined with our unique, you know, the unique features that we're building inside After Hour uh, that no other app has ever tried before. And so what, what, was, uh, it, uh, was it intimidating when you met with him in a meeting and tried to convince him? You know, I think his uh, first words to me uh, were like, where are you based? I'm like, Mellow Park. And he said, sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's a big Miami guy now. It's all good. It's all good. I love him. But like, but like during, during that meeting, what did was it easy to sell them the vision, or was it? Uh, yeah, I mean, really fundraising, um, especially for a consumer app in twenty twenty four, is extremely hard. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, sugarcoat that. Um, investing, um, uh, well, I mean, we're trying to create a. Uh, there's a couple of different paths to product market fit. Um, a Sequoia Capital recently released a pretty great framework for this, and I think we are solely after something called hard fact. Right? We're trying to change consumer psychology, and that requires like a big unlock in society. Right. Yeah. So what is the hard fact that we're trying to change? I think it's twofold. One is um, everyone's lying on the Internet, especially in the finance world. Like you just can't trust anybody. Right. And right. we're trying to show that. No, seriously, you could trust people on After Hour. This person really does have a million dollars in Robinhood stock right now. Right. Um, the second hard fact we're trying to change is that you know, uh, this is, the, this is always the way it's going to be, right? Like you just can't, um, the algorithms prioritize clickbait and doomerism and engagement bait. And there's no actual deeper discussion, especially for finance happening on the internet. And we're like, no, it's happening on after people are actually conversing. People are actually helping each other. We actually have a very wholesome community. And I think that's also a big unlock that we're hoping to, you know, uh, tell the world about. Um, but anyways, back to, uh, the, the fundraise itself. I think I talked to, you know, of over a hundred different investors. And it was, um, uh, there was, you know, there was, uh, the main question that kept coming up was around growth, right? And like, what's gonna, what's gonna finally unlock that growth for us. Right. And we have a couple of ideas coming up really soon that I don't want to share too much yet. Uh, that will finally, uh, uh, I think help us get that hundred X growth. All right. Um, getting into the, uh, the end of the interview here, I want to do a little bit of rapid fire. But first of all, building a startup, very difficult. Mental health, I would imagine, is take, taking a bit of a, a hit as you're trying to take something from zero to one. How are you personally doing as a, as a founder? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I pulled a little bit too many all-nighters uh, last month. My doctor said, uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what you got to do, right? It's what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, the best part about, you know, especially, you know, working at a startup, running a startup is um, you feel like everything is worth it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and especially in this space, like I'm so passionate about finance and talking about finance and getting other people to talk about it. Um, it, it, it just, it, it doesn't feel like work. Right. But what, what, what happens on the days where you feel like quitting? I know you wouldn't quit, but you know, the days where things suck, like what, what mm -hmm. triggers you and how do you resolve it? Do you go get a ch some cheesecake or you watch Netflix or. Oh man. Oh man. I tell, I tell other founders all the time that, or people that are thinking about starting a, a startup is that it's, uh, you need a balance of internal and external factors to kind of keep you going, right? Mm -hmm. Like willpower can only go so long. And so like on days are down, I just talk to my users, right? I, I, I give them my phone number. I jump on calls with them. I, I DM them. I just talk to my users like, hey, you know, why do you use After Hour? <laughs> what do right. you like about it, right? And I think that's that kind of that external kind of motivation. That like, oh, this is really making a big impact. Right, um, and right. That's, definitely so, important. that's so important. Yeah, yeah. But on the, uh, I guess, more um, non-work side, uh, I cook a lot. Uh, I'm, I, I got a, I got a barbecue, uh, uh, and I, I just love grilling meats. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, favorite movie, favorite movie. Oh, this is the rapper fire se section. Um, yep. you know, have, did you see the movie boyhood? No boyhood. It, it made such a profound impact on me. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a movie that took place in real time over, I think 10 years. Okay. Like a, a camera crew followed this is boy. Uh, it's, fi it's a fictional story, right? But they follow the actors over the course of 10 years. So you got to see this boy grow up 
from like I think eight to eighteen years old. Um, you know, playing a role, but oh, it just it, the ending just I don't know had such a big impact on me, especially the mom's ending. I don't want to spoil it for the audience, but if you have watched Boyhood before, I got impacted by the the the, the last scene with the mom a lot. Okay. Uh, who's your favorite stock influencer? Like a Kathy Wood, Bill Ackman, it's kind of a stock celebrity. Mm, mm. You know, back in 2020, 2021 days, I spent a lot of time watching, you know, Graham Stephan, uh, Meet Kevin, uh, Andre Jake, you know, they're kind of the YouTubers, right? Uh, they definitely taught me a lot. You know, these days, I admit, you're doing a great job. Like, uh, seriously, uh, in terms of being helpful to your audience, being transparent, like a lot of values that I have and I, I try to bring for After Hour, like you um are our perfect model for that uh, i love i love opening app uh, i love opening uh, twitter or now x and seeing your tweet as as my first one okay so it's me that's your answer that's great that's all we need <laughs> um and then finally who's your who's a public ceo you look up to right now public ceo um i think most i, I think I, I gotta give credit to vlad a lot you mm. know especially the kind of uh rebound from the 2021 days, right? Like I know Robin Hood took a, took a hit and and that whole debacle, whatever. Um, but I think he's kind of taking that and really uh, made Robin Hood a beast, right? That Robin Hood Goat event was amazing, and your interview with him was really really good too. I think he's starting to open up a little bit more, be a little bit more active on Twitter and drawing his little uh, sketches on his uh, <laughs> AUM charts. Um, he's learning how to speak internet, you know. He's he's and he's also turning Robin Hood into a formidable beast. So. Yeah. I love it. All right. Kevin Zhu, founder of After Hour. His Twitter is in the description. His After Hour is in the description. Then people who want to sign up to After Hour, that's also in the description as well. And uh, sign up, check it out, and see what it looks like. Thank you. There it is. Thank you, Kevin. We will see you on the next one. Bye, everyone.